Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I am Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Today is all about the fast face when it comes to Saints 3D foundation. I'm gonna go over my five steps to getting your full face done as quick as possible with all my tips and tricks. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and thanks for being here. Good morning, friends. I don't know if you can tell or hear. It is pouring down rain here in the Midwest today. So let's lift our spirits a little bit with some makeup. Today we're gonna talk about the basics of 3D foundation and how you can get a really fast face out using your fingers and painting, doing the finger painting method. I will be honest, I've been an artist a very long time and that is my least favorite way of applying because it leads to a lot of other issues that we have to troubleshoot down the road. So if you want to get a fast face with the best look, the best longevity, the easiest when it comes to blending so you don't get patchiness, keep watching. I'm gonna go over my five easy steps, but first of all, before you start makeup application, which is skin prep. Let me know down below if you would like me to do an entire video on skin prep, because I feel like I've been getting a lot of questions lately. I use my SPF as my primer, if you will. I have very strong feelings about whether you need a primer or not, but in some cases you might. But for me, I have my sunscreen on. I've let it set over 15 minutes and so now it's got a nice film and I know I'm not gonna disturb my SPF when I go to apply my makeup. But other things I do when I sit down, number one, I'm going to prepare my perfecter. So I'm gonna put in a video here of how I do it. It is very important and I know some people skip using the perfecter at all or when they're doing a fast face, they're like, I don't have time for this bad boy to dry down. But I'm telling you, it is a night and day difference on how it's gonna sit on your skin, especially if you're looking for a skin-like finish. The Perfector is the only way I can get my makeup to look the way I want. And after seven years of trial and error, I can tell you, even I cannot control the amounts I apply enough to skip this. I've tried many, many times. So I prep this and I'm gonna have it sitting here while I start my face. So before I even sit down to put on my makeup, get this prepped so it'll be perfect by the time I'm ready for it. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lip plumper. This is an unnecessary step for most people. For me, <laughs> one of the biggest signs that I'm aging is that my lips are deflating. Gotta love that. And my eyeshadow primer, I am going to do a really quick eye today. And if you have mature kind of eyelids like I do or oily eyelids of any kind, I don't recommend skipping this. I can't wear eyeshadow without an eye primer. And I do not put one on my face. I just have my sunscreen for my skin type on my face. And that is all I need. All right, so now we got our face ready. It is time to go in with our 3D foundation. If you are unfamiliar with our creams, 3D foundation is the line that is meant to give you a 3D look to your face because it is a highlight and contour system all in one palette. So they're all creams. We have everything from highlights, which are what gives coverage, contours, which gives dimension, also bronzers, which give warmth, illuminators, which give glow. My very favorite, lip and cheeks, which are both blush and lip products. And then of course we even have eyeshadow, setting powder, many, many other things. So we're only gonna go over the basics today, which is the bare necessities. One of the reasons why this makeup is so fast is because this is all you need. You have a palette, you open it, you grab your brush, you apply. I can do it with one hand. I don't have to open and close bottles and it saves a lot of time digging through your makeup bag. And I discovered this makeup as I was a, I want to, I almost said new mom on my third child. And I was like, I wish I had this with baby number one because it made my life so much easier. And so I'm going to show you 
even if you want a really fast face, some people are worried that the method I use is going to take more time, but I promise it won't. So in the finger paint method, you use your fingers and you kind of put all the colors where they're supposed to be. You take one brush and you blend it out. It does sound very easy. It makes the makeup look really quick and easy. It is not the me best method though when it comes to those people like me that have maybe concerns on their face that want a little bit more coverage. And two, you have to be really good at blending. I find most people over blend when they use that method and then again, they don't have good coverage. They can't see their contour and it leads to having to troubleshoot a lot of those things down the road. So I'm gonna show you the method I prefer. This gives me the best longevity, best coverage over my hyperpigmentation, rosacea, under eye circles, the list could go on and on. And if you have kind of a little bit more contrast in your skin, like I have redness, you can tell my neck does not. If you have any kind of contrast like I do, I definitely don't recommend just one shade all over. And so my first step is gonna be if you do have beautiful even skin tone and you can just use one main color, I'm jealous. <laughs> you probably don't need makeup anyway, but you can apply that here. I'm gonna show you my color corrector. And so this is how I can use less makeup overall because with this makeup, you have to match the darkest points of your face first. And these colors don't cover or last very well if you're using a shade too light for the points you're using. So if I was to use this color all over my full face, within an hour, it will just have faded away. Even this color is my normal main shade. It kind of matches me, but it doesn't color correct all of the color issues I have in my skin, which is the depth, darkness, and redness that I want to blur, if you will. So you can tell my lip plumper, I always put that on first. It turns my mouth very red. And so I have to color correct that. Again, redness, I have rosacea, lots of hyperpigmentation, and my color corrector is what allows me to still get a skin-like look, like really natural in the end without too much makeup. If I were to skip that, I'd have to use a lot more of this shade to cover it, and it actually pulls me off slightly, gives me worse coverage, and gives me long, worse longevity. And so that's what an artist's job is for. These colors are very deceiving. These probably don't look anything like what my skin tone looks like on camera, but I promise you, they're very pigmented, you use very little product, and an artist should be able to color match you perfectly. It's not to one shade, it is usually a combination of shades that's gonna be the perfect match for you. Based on how you like to wear your makeup, your skin concerns, and all of your preferences. And so I cover all of that in my color match questionnaire. I will link down below the video and in the pinned comment, so that way I know exactly what you're looking for before I even see your face, and so I can match you perfectly the first time. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go in with my color corrector. Tip number one, when you're starting your foundation, if you're wanting a fast face, choose a larger brush, okay? So there's a big difference between, let's see, a lot of times I use this brush for my color corrector. You can see, there's a big difference. If you want the fastest face possible, use a brush that's gonna cover the largest surface area. Makes sense, right? It's gonna cover quicker, faster. So we're gonna go in with that today. Uh, this is the blush brush, but one of my favorite brushes for color correcting because it will give a very small, thin amount. It doesn't pick up too much product and I can distribute it so you don't even see it on my face. I can distribute it over a large area very quickly. Now I do have rosacea, so you'll see. I'll turn red and then it will settle back down. Sometimes it's hard to see because I am applying so very little of this product. But using a color corrector, you shouldn't need a large amount. And if you do, that just means you're not using the right color and you need to be color matched again. So I am just buffing this on the skin, which just means small circles so that it distributes that cream over 
the larger surface area really quickly and easily. Once I've got a really thin amount on all of those darkest points, you'll see I didn't fully color correct everything, right? I still have a lot of depth around my eyes and I'm also a lot lighter around my eyes. And so I'm gonna pick up a smaller brush because this brush does not reach up in these corners quite as easily as a small brush will. So this is the detail. I'm gonna use the smaller end. Again, I'm just gonna tap and that way I can do the same thing and buff that color on lightly around that delicate under eye skin, okay? And so you'll see right away, it kind of tones that area and takes away some of that too light <laughs> spots. I also use it on my eyelids now that my eyelid primer has set to tone that as well color correct veins and tone the lighter portions. Okay, and while I have this detailed brush in my hand, now if you need more coverage anywhere, with this method it's really easy because once you've kind of toned and blurred out a lot of those larger areas, you can go in and the deepest, darkest spots on your face, you can press on more of that corrector. So what I do is I just kind of tap in and then I then tap on and I use that denser brush to then kind of build up coverage, all right? Same thing if you have broken capillaries like I do, I kind of like to go in with more product there to give better coverage. I've got a nice blemish on the side of my nose. Any other darker spots or blemishes? And then also the deepest parts, if you have darker points like I do, under the eye. I like those dang inner corners. Okay, so you can control the amount of coverage you have with that color corrector. Now, if you don't need a color corrector, with your main shade, you can do the same thing. For a natural look, buff it in like I did that color corrector. That will give you the least amount of coverage. It will just kind of give you a light hand of the color. If you want more coverage, or if you used a color corrector like I do, and you're getting pulled too warm and you need to kind of tone it down, your main shade should do that. So I'm just gonna kind of tap into my main, and then I'm just going to lightly tap on across my full face. This tones down that warmth, keeps me matching, builds up some of that coverage, evens out my skin tone. And there you go. We're done with the foundation step. That is step number one. And now we have a nice, even whatever type of coverage you prefer. So step number two is bringing in that three dimensional look. So you can do this in either way. Contour, which is going to be a gray based looking shadow to your face. Traditionally, contour is always gonna be gray because that's gonna be the most natural looking shadow but a lot of people don't want to contour. They just kind of want to add warmth back to their face. And so you can also do that with bronzer. Bronzer also will give dimension when applied in a certain way, but it's not going to create shadow. It's just going to add warmth. So if it's summertime and you're like, I don't want to contour. I just want to kind of warm up my face and get that nice glowy bronzed look. You can still do that and you can skip the contour and just bronze. For me on the daily, I tend to contour and use bronzer when I need some extra warmth, when I'm feeling washed out, when I feel like my face is looking lighter, I need help matching, all of those things. Totally personal preference, sometimes I do both. Now, since I used a color corrector, everything after this point will never be this 
motion again. What happens if you use this motion is that everything under it is gonna be moved around. You're gonna start exposing the redness and the dark points and all of those things. So I apply this way very strategically so that I get the best coverage since I have a very uneven skin tone. Now with the finger paint method, you don't put anything under your contour. Sometimes those people come to me and they're like, why is it looking like my contour is really patchy and I'm not getting any coverage? Our contours don't give as much coverage as our highlights do, but they do offer some coverage. If you don't have any issues in your contour area, by all means, you can apply it first. If you have issues like me where you have redness and dark spots through there, I don't recommend it because those dark spots are gonna show through your contour and it's gonna make it look like your contour isn't blended. It's gonna look patchy. You're gonna see those points. Um, if you have a lot of redness, a lot of times your contour colors are gonna pull really warm because you haven't color corrected that area first. And so if I don't color correct and I use any contour, it looks very red. It doesn't look like a natural shadow. So I'm gonna show you with my gray-based contour, which is Astoria, and the detail brush. Now this small end we used for those detail work, I'm not gonna use the large flat end to contour. This is my Holy Grail contouring brush. I recommend it for everyone. You can pounce in and control the amount of color. Now, I showed how very little you need of the highlight. The contours are drier, and so you wanna make sure you can kinda of see that color on the brush before you go to your face. And with this method, we don't wanna move all of that underneath it, right? So we're gonna press it on and blend at the same time. Instead of drawing a stripe and then trying to work to blend it out and make it look natural and yet not blend it all away, which is what happens a lot of times, we're gonna just kind of be a little bit more strategic and go from the top of the ear start pressing it down towards the corner of that mouth, but stopping about the edge of the eye, okay? So now we're just gonna slowly, and I'm barely touching my face, I'm just gonna slowly, and you'll see I still have a lot of product left on the brush, slowly start tapping it, okay? And so at this point, we're only gonna press on product from here on out, okay? And pressing also blends when you're using a dense brush okay so we're just gonna press and once i feel like that color is on a good amount i'm gonna start pressing upwards to blend that harsh line out so i'm getting a nice defined line but i'm gonna diffuse it up so it will blend into my blush Okay, now you always have that brush you use the highlight with and you can just kind of tap here to kind of make sure that blurs in well. You don't want a harsh stopping point here. And if you don't like a defined line, you can take this brush and just kind of press it along that line until it's as diffuse as you like it. All right, that's it. We're gonna repeat on the other side. And with practice, you get very fast at this. And so this method is actually far faster than just using your fingers, painting it all over and then blending. That blending step takes you a very long time. Whereas this, you're just push, putting it on exactly where you want, controlling your coverage every step of the way. And so you're gonna know exactly what it's gonna look like and you're not gonna have to work on blending it out, which I find to be the hardest step for most people is blending. So here, you don't have to work much on blending. You just tap. Easy peasy. Now my forehead, if you notice, is probably the only area in my face I don't color correct. So I'm just going to press it along my hairline. Okay. And then I'm going to push it up into my hairline so I don't have like a white gap and then down into my highlight here so I don't have a harsh stopping point because there's no bone here. It's not like a cheekbone. We're not trying to define anything. We're just trying to frame our face and we wanna make sure this kind of just ombres into our highlights so it looks natural. 
So that is the only area you will ever see me pull or swipe with 3D foundation. Jawline. Okay, I lied. You can also pull it down your neck. We didn't color correct there. Pretty much any area you don't color correct. Now that can be different for everyone's face. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of bronzer. So that way, if you are anti-contour, you just want a bronze, you'll know how to do it as well. I technically keep multiple bronzers in my compact. Um, Bella is definitely the most universal. I like to keep glow illuminator with it. If you like a glowy look, it's a really great trick. If you don't, skip that. Heat waves is our darkest. A lot of times I will just kind of swirl into all three. It's nice having multiples next to each other because of the size of this brush. So I kind of just take advantage of that and I swirl into all of them and get that color on my brush. I can tell my heat waves is softer because it's picking up more of that. Okay, make sure it's kind of distributed across your brush. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're tapping. So bronzer goes high points of the face. So forehead, cheeks, nose, chin, and down the neck. So where the sun would naturally hit and then the neck to kind of bring it all together and make sure we're not a lot lighter on the so neck. So I like to just kind of tap and bring it in this C formation and add a little bit of warmth to the cheeks at the same time okay you'll kind of see the it can be as subtle or as dramatic as you like it's totally a personal preference thing you can use this method and slowly tap it on and build up the color until you're happy now if you don't contour you can really just be strategic about where you're putting it on your cheeks and you can still kind of get some dimension between your cheeks and your jawline by keeping it high on the cheek. Okay, the next step would be step number three. I consider brightening now an optional step. I will be honest, I always color match people to a brightener option, but it totally depends on your skin tone, and the look you're wanting and like what you're wanting to match. So for me, my neck is now no longer lighter than my face and so I'm good. If you naturally have a lighter neck and it is dramatically lighter than your face, your brightener could be the only thing that's really gonna be able to help you stay matching by pressing it on along your jawline, chin, center of your face, especially if you're not willing to take a bronzer down the neck. So for me, I sometimes just kind of brighten the side of my nose, especially if I'm contouring my nose, which I didn't today, because my nose is kind of wider, it will give the illusion of a slimmer nose. And then you can just kind of keep it in the inner corner. Now, if you have mature eyes like I do, we have to be a little bit more careful. The lighter you go in our highlights, the more it can show texture, which is why you have to layer it over darker shades. If you put this lighter shade directly under your eyes and your eyes are darker there, it's gonna show dramatic texture and it's not gonna sit nicely and it's not gonna give any coverage. So I fully covered, got it back to matching, and then I can layer this if I want that pop of brightness. And so. Everyone's personal preference is different. Some people really like that pop. If you have mature eyes, I recommend kind of keeping it right here next to the nose and keeping it out of where we have the most texture. You can even put it a little bit down the center of the nose to highlight, um, again, along the jawline if you need that to stay matching. Right. I don't brighten every day, depends on my mood. So on days I don't brighten, my next step is going to be the perfecter. Now it is time for this bad boy. Oh, how I love her. So I'm just going to tap, okay? We're not gonna swipe or sweep in any way. This is the only way we can get off excess. Now, you might not think it looks heavy. Like to me, this looks heavy on my face because I like a very skin-like finish to my makeup and so, this is how I get that. 
I'm just gonna tap, okay? It shouldn't feel wet anymore. If you prepped it the way I showed, it should just feel cold. So we're gonna make sure we don't have any residual makeup where it likes to sit, which is the lowest parts of my face, smile lines around the eyes. Around the eyes is where I concentrate this the most because that's where I tend to crease. But again, everyone's face is different. So I'm just doing a light press over everywhere and concentrating where I crease under the eyes. Okay, and I'm rotating as it starts feeling warm on my face so that it can do its job. You can tell how much it already took off. Now, as soon as I do that, because I'm such a creaser, I will immediately set under my eye. Me, I'm gonna use the vanilla dust and the powder brush. I'm just going to get a really thin layer across the entire brush, so that way all I have to do is tap it, and it doesn't increase the look of texture. If you use a very small amount, a very controlled amount, of a very finely milled powder. So to me, that blurs in all the right areas and I'm set for the whole day. So I take the excess where I can maybe crease and then I fully set my eyes so they're ready for eyeshadow. Otherwise, your eyeshadow will stick to the highlight that you used to color correct. Now for the fun part, we're on step four, lip and cheeks. Oh, this is my favorite. You can tell, I have a whole level dedicated because I like to wear a new color every day. And when I first started wearing this makeup, it was the game changer. I needed to start having fun with my makeup again because I had worn the same blush color for three years prior. It's so sad, but true. So now I switch it up on the daily. Um, you can have a matte, a gloss. You can mix and match, mix them together, create a new shade every day, which is what I tend to do. Wear a different color on your lips or your cheeks. Today, I'm going to, I'm gonna go put down a base of a matte shade. This is Madrid. Again, with the blush end. I'm just gonna get a light hand and just put this down for pigment. Again, pressing. So outside apple of the cheek, along that contour, blend it onto the apple, and there you go. I'm not gonna dot it and then try to blend and move all of that product around. It will totally expose everything we just worked so hard to cover. And then I'm gonna top it with Tropicana, which is a glossy shade, which gives that glow to the cheek, which is my favorite. We have a lip liner called Suede, or you can use your contour color. Up a canna and I'm gonna put some sunshine state over it for some gold shimmer. Okay, there you go. Lip and cheek done. Now that I'm done with that perfector, I'm gonna pick that up and use it to illuminate. So this is what adds the glow factor. This one is Nova and I'm just gonna tap that on the upper part of the, the cheekbone. So we got contour, lip and cheek, and then illuminator. And add it to Cupid's bow, inside corner, under brows, anywhere you want a little bit of glow. And last but not least, we're gonna fill in the brows real quick and do a quick eyeshadow look. So I'm gonna use the line brush 
and an eyeshadow. This is Trust to just define out my brows real quick. Much better. Then I'm just gonna grab my ride or die. Let's do Bubba, which is just a nice matte and we're gonna throw it into the crease to add some definition on these hooded eyes. Haloing. Like so. And then going in with a little bit of a shimmer just on the lid to catch some light. A nice two color look. This is one of my summer go to's. Crush. Bubba. We already brightened. No liner needed for daytime for sure. All right, there you go. There is my 3D look quick and easy five steps for a full face, a little bit about how to apply 3D, some tips and tricks on what to do and what to avoid. Two brushes and your shades. I'd be happy to help you out get your perfect custom colors. Again, my color match questionnaire is in the drop box below the video, as well as the pinned comment. Drop any questions you might have over 3D foundation. And again, thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Love you.